Hey, this is Charlie. And Athena Grimm. We're with the Raise Up podcast. Thank you for joining us. We hope that if you're looking at our podcast on one of the many podcast uh, places that you can download, that you would also stop by our website and check out raiseupmindset.com. We're doing something a little bit different with our podcast now, and we're offering this Raise Up response sheet. So really what it is is it's a nice little summary for those of you who are really busy and haven't got a chance to listen to the podcast of what what was in that episode and then also a practical response that you can have that you can like take away from it and apply it to your own life. So you can get that by going to the website and signing up for for our, our online email list and we'll make sure that you get that with every episode that's released. So thanks. you know and we're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. So I yep. mean, these are all great platforms and we'd like to really get the word out to a lot of other people. So if you can share it, like it, if you do like it and you want to share it and you think somebody else could yeah. really use this, I think we'd really appreciate that. And we would absolutely. the bigger audience we can get, I think the cooler it would be because I think there's a lot of people struggling with different issues in politics and business and personal things that we could all help with. And I think this is a really cool platform to be able to put this on. So thank you. Yes, the answer is to be in community in, in almost every every respect. It's, it's the answer. So this episode, Charlie and I were wanting to dive into how do we balance all the other humans who have free will around us while we're operating our lives and our business. And many of us have... Uh, been in situations where somebody created a rule that now has doubled airport fees or uh, there was something that happened within the city and now this is this is what we're dealing with or you've had team members who have made some decisions that now you have to navigate around and so we're we're just gonna check in on on that topic that's a lot to talk about. I mean, there's a lot of different industries that <clears throat> really affects everything we do in our personal life and our business life. And, you know, it's our community. It's uh, our, our work campus. It's it's a lot. It's uh, our vendors and people we deal with and the relationships, you know, and all of the things we've always talked about is relationship based, how we do things, how everything's relationship back here um, to, to our employees. So what's going on with them for them having babies or buying homes or or, or something that's traumatically happened. They've lost a loved one and they need some time off or they're trying to figure out things. So everything affects everything. The mood, the climate, the energy here. It's, it's all one. It's true. And, you know, having core values in your business as the filter that you run your decisions through is probably one of the greater benefits that we have because when we're faced with a choice and it doesn't align with our core values, then we, we, it's, it's a really clear answer to that choice. And I would highly encourage that if you really haven't thought about the things that you stand for and get those written down, that you sometimes have to look at the contrast and go, what is it that I don't stand for? And then therefore, what's the opposite of that? And start getting some foundation underneath you because it will, it will set you in a place where you make one decision and that one decision makes a bunch of little decisions that you never have to make. Because um, I like to use this example. I have uh, a thing with movies. I don't watch movies with disqualifying titles. If it sounds like it's a horror movie or it's gory or it's, it's like kind of off the rails a little bit, <clears throat> I'm pretty, I, I, like, I like certain genres. And so, I don't have to uh, think about it. If the movie title is disqualifying, then there isn't any other decisions I need to make beyond that. I'm just not gonna go watch it. Sometimes she's ple pleasantly surprised about something, you know, that something will be a little it bit better It would have to be a testimony, a referral mm. from someone else that would be like, no, you really do need to see that. Not me. <laughs> so, you know, some of the things that are coming to mind and we've been talking about is really what's going on with our city here in Anchorage. And, um, you know, it's it's been such a great, living in Alaska is absolutely amazing. I mean, the, the frontier, everything we have here, but we've really had some... Uh, decisions that I think our city has made in this last year or two that has just been really heart-wrenching and that we've had some, and I know, I know we're I not the only ones. I think it's more than a year. I mean, I really think that COVID well, has um, really like shown it, shown 
everybody some things. And, and we can see a contrast between other cities in our state and the city that we live in now, and that's probably what makes it even more noticeable. It's like comparing it to other cities. Yeah, and we're not getting like, you know, the people from, uh, you know, say Oregon going over to California or California going to Arizona. You know, it's not just state line to state line. I mean, you really have to go through another country to get, to, get to us here. to drive here at least. I mean, you could fly here, but I mean... Um, this is not one of the places I would think that we'd see a lot of homeless people or our population growing in homeless. And I, I don't know if it's just a homeless thing, if it's just really a, um, there's other factors in it, drugs, whatever else it might be. And there's some truly people that just like to live in the outside that don't want to be structured in a four wall place. And, and, and I don't understand those things and I, I'm not a big coalition on it, but I can tell you that it has impacted our city in such a way that it's been tougher and it's been the way we do business and, and even setting up our new shop you know we built this new property I say we built it we bought an existing property and, and, and we enhanced it and we enhanced it, it but yeah. one of the biggest things we enhance is the security division in here because we have employees here 24 hours a day we definitely wanted a great camera system we definitely wanted a locking system we wanted gates to shut down at certain times open up at certain times um, access where people get into and a huge expenditure to us, and um, but it gave us peace of mind on it. Well, now you're having some homeless camps that are just half a block away from here that it's blue tent cities, and it's happening just not to us, but it's happening to other people that we know that own businesses around town or trying to create new hotels or trying to have a pizzeria. You know, I mean, Moose's Tooth is dealing with this huge problem. It's right down the street from their people. That Their people are getting harassed, their, their employees, their guests, and people are just stealing pizzas right off the shelf or to-go items used to be a thing where you can go to Section 32 and pick up your pizzas. Yeah. So, um, when I say all this, this has been kind of disheartening because we saw some video footage that just came out last night. In fact, I was looking at this last night. Uh, Justin Creech, uh, who's been on our, our podcast before, sent me this thing, and I was just shocked. And I sent it to a half a dozen people, and I'm thinking, this is our town. This is not, this is not somewhere that you've seen frequently homeless in San Francisco or Oakland or Portland, where all this stuff is going on in other cities. Like, this is hitting, I guess, more home for me because... Uh, I, I lived in California and I lived in a beautiful place, Carmel, Monterey area. And I lived in the Bay Area when I was younger and um, I didn't notice it as much. And, you know, before it wasn't so blatant out there, but after the nice circuit make it where you can put a tent anywhere and do this stuff, um, I, I believe everybody has rights. Uh, everybody does. But there's got to be rights for the people that are doing things right, too. And um, I really feel that we're not getting that. And I, I'm really, <clears throat> I'm... Uh, I'm shocked in where our our assembly has gone these days. I'm shocked where some of this other stuff, because we used to have some people that were really into the politics of what the people wanted. And now I feel like we have some people that are just there. It's their agenda, and they feel like that's where they want to go. And I am not a politician person by any means. I am not there. But I do believe in backing some different things. And when you're talking about backing what you believe and writing these things down, um, I don't believe in the same things I probably believed in 10 years ago or five years ago. I think that as we evolve, things happen a little bit differently. And so if you write them down and you understand what you were really for then, you might change your perspective of, of a charity or somebody else that you're believing into. But when it's affecting our employees or cars getting broken into or things that we're having and theft at our rampage right now and there's really no consequences and our poor police officers and our EMS people and the hospitals and everybody else is, has this huge outpour of all this downfall coming down on them. It is a serious thing and I, and I feel like um, I never wanted to be the person that was involved and I, I don't even tell you how many people say you should get in politics. I'm like, oh hell no. You know, this is not my general. But I'm a great backseat person to help trying to get people elected. You want to be a laws. cheerleader, you don't you don't want to I never want to be a cheerleader. I never want to be a cheerleader. Okay. I never want to okay. be a pop pop, but I definitely want to be a backer. I want to be a supporter in different things that I feel like it's great and right for our city. And I really feel like right now that we are lacking um, some severe leadership in our city and I, I'm hoping that some of these uh, leaders that we have are involved really get with the business community because we are part of the backbone of that, which is creating jobs, which is creating homes, which is creating paying taxes, paying the taxes and paying things that are in here. I mean, um, residential taxes is huge. And I know they want to put a 3% tax up right now. I'm not opposed to a tax in our city because I think we need the resources. I'm just opposed to where all the money is going now. 
I'm opposed to that. We have all these resources and alcohol taxes. We really don't have anywhere to function that this money's going besides we have just a nice nest egg sitting over here, but we haven't dedicated those funds or been more deliberate in those funds where they go to to. So I'm just trying to figure out our city leaders here because as we get taxed more, it's more difficult for us. We raise the prices and we're kind of just kicking that can down the street. Like everybody just keeps raising and raising and raising and there's gotta be a ceiling limit to what that gets raised to. So <clears throat> I would like more intentionality on what our leaders are doing. And then all the way down to our vendors. I mean, like, you know, we have to have these relationships with these people and we have the right to not agree with them. We have the right not to uh, participate or use them as vendors anymore. And as they see, have the same right as us. I mean, relationship-based is huge. We are a relationship-based company that we definitely lean on our relationships. And we we look at those and, and uh, we, we thrive in those. And right now, I think our culture has gotten into such a digital error that we have not met some of the people we've ever done business with because we have Zoom meetings and all these other things. Face-to-face -face anyway. Face-to-faces, I, I, you know, and I think there's a must. I think once you develop that relationship, it's easier to have face-to-face, -face. but like we're looking at another contract we're looking at now and we've been doing all this talking back and forth in text and I'm like, let's get together and meet with them this week. Let's, let's sit down and figure it out because there's something really neat when you sit at a table and everybody can see the facial expressions. It's this to collaboration. See that, yeah, you, that you have so much more there that it, it feels like a little bit more in depth. Like we just don't have this and something else is going on in the background and we're distracted with it. Like we're, we're given intentionality to well, it. Well, and so. you can't always feel the energy in the room if you're not actually in the room. But you know, what I'm curious about is I think that you and I share kind of a different perspective on, on the contrast that we experience. So I look at it like I want humans to have free will around us. I want them to have the freedom to decide if they want to live uh, outside or inside. However, there does need to be some safety guardrails and... Uh, it's almost like there are some situations that have occurred that it's like there's these adolescents that are kind of running amok through the city. There, it would, it kind of looks like if a, some young person that didn't really have uh, mentorship or uh, adult supervision and they just got to do whatever they wanted, a lot like if you have children and you have a whole bag of candy and the little kid sees the candy, they're gonna roll for it. And, um, and eat all the candy and it's and I see that there is this like this theme of there is a muck that's getting ran and people are getting really hurt it's not just that there's some stuff that's getting stolen like people are being killed yeah. in these situations and now it's serious it's so serious uh, and so then what's the balance that we strike as business owners because we have options. We can move our business out of the city. Sure. We could um, sell the business. We could move out of the city as our personal houses too. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, we used to think the valley was kind of an interesting place because there was a lot of crazy stuff that happened in the valley. But I mean, you know, we have a lake home in, in the valley and we, you know, we tend to think it's, it's a little safer out there sometimes in our own city now, which Anchorage, which I never used to think that way. Well, and you know, there's another place here too, is it's if we're not, if our values don't align with the direction of the leadership, I mean, in almost every respect, if you work for somebody or if you're doing business with somebody and they don't align with your, your values, then you tend to not want to hang out with them so much, or it's just like, you don't feel like you have a lot in common. And so you don't really feel that, that welcome camaraderie that you would otherwise have. And, and I feel like that's kind of how we're feeling here in the city is it's, it may not be obvious to uh, other people that maybe are just visiting, but to be here, we're kind of feeling like we're not wanted here. Like our voice doesn't matter. The contribution that we make to the airport and the community and what we're doing here with BAC matters less, less than maybe what we thought. Well, you even think of it on the EMS side, you know, now we run a private ambulance company here too, and we're dealing with some of the aftermath of what's happening for patient transports from inter-facility hospitals and the life lights that come in and things like that too. Yeah, like we're it, seeing it is, that. We are seeing a huge impact and it's, um, it, it is. And, you know, I, 
I will try to get behind and support any person. There's always going to be a person that I would like to see that would be elected. But even some of the other people have been elected that we are not over joyful were, if they're doing good work and they come in and do a good job, they're who we have for the next three to four years. So I'd rather make it good and work with keep them. The positive and keep the positive and energy. And focusing on what we have in common. But they have to listen to us. And just because we don't um, agree on the same political views on that stuff, they're still supposed to be serving us as the public. Not just the people that voted for them, but the rest of the public too. And I think that's where our, our I, I, you know, you go back to the Dick Trainees and the people that used to be in the assembly. Those guys really, like good or bad, they told you how it was. Like, this is the right thing to do. And I, and I really feel, and it's not, I don't think they think they're not doing the right thing. Because you and I had this conversation last night. I think they th truly think they're doing the job of what they think they should be doing. But I don't think they're talking to some of the other people that are really like, hey, I can care if you're Republican, if you're Democratic, or you're a neutral independent, person, independent, whatever. neutral, whatever it is. Do the right thing. And I, I always like, um, and I'm going to use a phrase from Doug Schrage. Uh, he's our he's our fire chief here in Anchorage, and um, and he was, you know, when I was down at Gerbit Fire Department, he was a chief. To, you know, everybody looked at him as a chief, and he has he got great integrity and everything like that. If you're doing the right thing, it's the right thing. If it's customer service. It's, he had like three or four bunch marks on this whole thing. Um, it's legal, it's not illegal. You can do it and you don't need my permission. I will always back you. And I, I've always took that to heart. I've even emailed him asking for the phrase and I should have it written down a little bit more I better. I think it was but something like if it's legal, the right thing ethical, for the team. Legal, ethical, customer service, uh, all, there, was, there was five things total. But I, I look at that as what we try to do for our business too is you know those are all things that our team doesn't have to ask us to do. Yeah. Um, and... Um, I, I look at that in the values, and I, I really look at that in our assembly, and I look at our leadership as mayors, and things like this. I liked Bronson. I was a Bronson supporter. I was a Mike Robbins supporter before that. Bronson won. We switched teams over to it because I aligned with their values a little bit more. Um, our new mayor, I, I've never met her personally. I know where she stood before, but some of the decisions she's making off the bat, what's going on with our, our city, I, I'm, I'm struggling you with have right now. Concerns. I have some serious concerns, and I have concerns for our city, and our have there. And, and it's not like she's reaching out to the different community members here in town that's saying, hey, what is your guys' take on this? I mean, I know we have 250 employees. We're not a smaller company. We're a, a medium-sized company now. And I, I would wish that she would listen to some of the things that we have some of our community leaders in this town and the same with our assembly. I have no beefs with them personally by any means. I don't have anything associated with them. I don't hang out with those people. And maybe that's a little bit on my part. Maybe I should be trying to get more in front of them and saying, hey, as a community leader in town, I really, this is my voice of opinion. Maybe it makes a difference. Um, I just want them to realize that our town is not getting any better. And, and when I say that, it's a beautiful place to visit. We love our tourism in Alaska, but we can do better. We can be a better town. We can be a, doing a much better job. And we can get all politics aside and do the right thing. And I think that's what we're looking for. And the same thing we're looking for in our employees. You know, don't, don't, don't shortchange somebody. Don't do it. Do the right thing. You know, what the right thing is sometimes is, is not always the easiest thing. Yeah. And, you know, where I come from in that place is people's actions tell you a story. And their words are one thing and their actions are another. And I tend to not want to convince people to do the right thing. They're either, they're in a place in their life where, and when I say the right thing, I'm not necessarily saying that I know everything and that my opinion is always right because I'm open to receiving new information that would perhaps I would change my mind. There's been a thousand things that I thought I was aligned in this area and I changed my mind about. And you know, Charlie kind of you makes a awakened. joke. <laughs> you were awakened on some different things. Yeah, well, you know, it, Charlie will joke sometimes where he's been like married to several different women over these last 27 years. Only one woman, but... Uh, lots of... But she's um, changed throughout her... Yeah, and so I think that there's this room for curiosity and understanding that has to take... You have to take a step forward in. But I'm also not working to get people to go to an event that they really don't want to go to. And I think that that's what a large majority of the population that um, we align with, they kind of feel the same way is it's like, look, I'm not going to 
badger or whoever to like change their mind about this or try to convince them that this this thinking is um is got a few missteps to it it's like i will just take my business somewhere else and i'll take my resources somewhere else and i think we're seeing that here in our community where there's been some things that have been lined up and we've missed the opportunities and i don't want to spend the energy to convince people of things like i want them everybody's on their own journey and we we need contrast in our life in order to really know how great we have it and what i mean by that is that we don't know that it, the light is so bright if we haven't seen the darkness before and there's things that some people think are just absolutely the the country's going to hell in a handbasket but it's like i i want to look for the gift that we're going to receive in this season and i'm less compelled to get into the middle of the things that other people are getting into the middle of because it's it's extra momentum towards the wrong side or the, the wrong subject. energy <laughs> yeah it's it's wrong energy and you can feel it you know that you feel resistance when you step into a certain scenario or a conversation or whatever and it's like why would you want to live in that i i, I don't and so that's I, I feel charlie has this desire to want to to not stand by and let it happen on his watch and i'm like but everybody gets to be who they want to be and everybody gets to be who they want to be as long as it doesn't really out will affect all the other people. Like we have a one, I mean, it's, and I, I'm talking about the homeless because I think that's one of the things that we've talked about mostly lately is what's going on with it. Uh, they're not bad people. They're just in a bad situation. Whatever else is happening, we don't have a solution for the problem. But the, the solution shouldn't come just on, a, it, it should come on us as a community, but we should make the right decisions. And the one and a half percentile of what the homeless community is Based shouldn't have to... Population. Yeah, is running the population of 98.5% of the population here. So why is that the deciding factor of everything that we're doing right now and the resources it's taking? The resource that we're giving out right now for that 98.5% of the people, the tax people are paying for that. The people that are buying homes, we're investing in properties. We're up to like 10 properties now. So we are the people paying for those things. So as a, as a person that's helping Finance. Finance the city and, and the resources and what's going on here. We should have some say in what's going on. And I appreciate the one and a half percent that probably don't have some of the resources that we do too. But there should be some things and definitely some help given to them. We just need our leaders to be able to look at this and say, this is, you know, hearing some of the, the, the podcasts of what was going on with this other one that was going on here and hearing, you know, some of our assembly members saying, well, this is not really the problem. This is the problem. And I'm thinking to myself, from outside in, I don't see this whatsoever. You guys are like really off our basis. And if you guys can't figure it out, bring some people that can. Putting portable toilets all over the town is not the issue. Um, it's not the problem. Yes, we have some defecation going on, but what's the real root cause? Let's not, let's not put a band-aid on it. Let's fish. Let's, let's, uh, let's fix the gashing wound. Right. And we have a really gashing wound right now. And a band aid's not going to really do a lot for it. Um, uh, our hospitals, we talked about this with the hospitals just the other day. We need more help with hospitals here in town. If it means our campus is growing out, we have bigger ER rooms or whatever else is going on. If we have campuses on the north side of town, midtown, and southland, I don't care who does it. Somebody just make it happen. You know, don't argue who's going to do it and who gets to be able to put their facility up. Let's do what's good for the people. And that's what I'm looking for. It's like, let's do the right things in this town that makes sense for the right things. That let's are not lifting do it. up our community yeah. and not tearing it down. Yeah. And, you know, the... And I know this is more of a serious podcast on this yeah. one because this is really affecting what's going on with our cities. And I, I'm sure if you live in some of the other cities, you guys are seeing it too. You're having the same situations occur where you're seeing it. And it's like... It's like I can't get back and just say nothing about it and just say, well, geez, you know, we're good in our little bubble here and that's it, you know, and now it's starting to affect us. Well, it's not just affecting us, it's affecting everybody. I mean, yeah. it's affecting tourism, it's affecting normal people who want to go to the parks and they want to go sit there because... Those are public parks, so they're allowed to be there, and anybody's allowed to be there, and I have that right, but they shouldn't affect 
families or kids or somebody else that we can't let ourselves go to the park. I mean, I remember as a kid going down to the parks and being there for six or seven hours because that was a safe, safe. place because other parents and people were there and something was to happen, somebody would step in. Now it's like, you know, do you step in the middle of this stuff? Am I going to get shot? Am I going to get hurt? Does this person have needles? What's going to go on? I mean, we have people shooting at our police officers. We have when they're trying to get rid of embankment uh, pro pro properties that are no longer allowed for people to be there. Then our police officers are overshot. They're getting hurt. We, we have all this stuff. Normal citizens, people are getting shot. People are getting killed. And it's like, when is enough enough? And when are you going to put enough bite into this that somebody's going to say, I'm not going to do this anymore? When are you going to put enough bite when it's not okay to steal cars or break into people's places and say, well, you just have to do a police report online now? I mean, enough is enough. I mean, we need to be able you know, to stand this. How we handle things that start to look like they're coming outside of the core values is we address it. We don't pretend that it's not happening, and we certainly don't spend our time arguing with other people about it not happening or, or how to handle it. It's like we try some things, and we run the experiment, and if it doesn't have an intended outcome, we do something else. But when we're looking at how we are managing actual behavior within the organization, that's something that we address right away. And they, they don't get to hang out if, if it's something that they just can't get behind is, look, we're respectful and we're kind to each other here. And we don't do things that uh, would, would otherwise suggest that we're not respectful and kind. And, and that's where I think the missing piece is with, with the homeless situation is that there's been a lack of support around like putting up some boundaries. And I, I think it all leads into what party you're sitting into. And I, I want them to realize that this is not a party issue. This is a real issue. Yeah. I don't care if you're a Democrat, an independent, or a Republican. This is our community This is our community. Issues. You can still have your beliefs on what things are going to happen and what's going to go on, but do the right thing. And if the right thing means that you have to bend a little bit on where your party sits at, then do that. You know, come to a decision that's going to be the best for the whole of the people. And the people are all of us. It's not that one individual party. We're not divided as people in our community. No. We're, we're, we're we got all rid humans. of segregations and all that stuff years ago. I mean, everybody can use the toilet. Everybody can use everything these days. This is not a, 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 a racial. This is, not a, this is not a gender. This is nothing. This is the right thing to do that we need to make sure our city is doing it. And if it's getting these people help, if it's, it's finding a shelter for them, if it's finding a place that it, somebody else has come up with and it does it, maybe it's a temporary thing. Maybe it works for a time. But when you're saying that, well, we've helped two or 300 people get up homeless, well, great. You've hit 1% or you've hit 10% of the of total the demographic. populations yeah. over four years. Is that the best we can do or can we do better? Can we make this happen? And if you need to get some leaders involved, I mean, you have the tons of people that are volunteered through massive different companies here and corporations in town that have, uh, they have sort of homeless correlation, all these other people. But if you're not using them, it's, not willing to listen. it's a waste of our time too, yeah. because if we're not going to be seen or heard, or if you're not really wanting our information from us, then we have other things that we can do than forth our time. But if you're taking us seriously and you're taking things seriously in a way that we can make a difference and we see it, we want to be all in. We want to help with it. But you have to take some of the advice from the people and you have to listen to... It's either that or it's step out of the way and let the community handle yes. the situation. Or and step out of the way and, and step off your position. <laughs> and I think that there are... Uh, so many uh, brilliant people that we know that would absolutely come with an open heart to start really problem solving and not just allowing the situation to grow, but it's really going to take people coming together in a space where it's safe and that you're going to be respected and there isn't going to be any retaliation or, or talking over or retaliation and i mean we're adults here and that's what we're looking for is um to just be able to coexist coexist all of us and there will be some people that absolutely want to live outside well then what does that mean because i mean i remember growing up in this town you couldn't camp in certain places 
Well, camping was restricted to the campgrounds, and there are campgrounds within our city. And you weren't allowed to camp on the city hall steps. And you or the city street, or anything else like that. But there should be a place within all the state parks that we have, with all the city land, wherever else it is, that you could put a something there that could be happening. I mean, there have already been suggestions and things like on this stuff, but we have to come together as one to do that. And, and it'd be much easier to do it in a area that's populated for it, that's made for it, and it's it's done than it is to have it on 42nd Street or 32nd Street or Next on Fairbanks businesses or, on that street or that kids are... or things are going around there. I mean, Absolutely. unless it happens to somebody that's political or something happens major, it seems like we're not going to have a change. So I, I'm hoping that everybody's seeing this. This is really one that we should be sharing with a lot of people because this is real. This is happening in our town. It's not just our town. It's your town too, wherever you're living, yeah. Seattle, Portland, Oregon, uh, it's Arizona, everywhere. 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 The only and place if it's is, not at your town, and then the only you place need to not be really reaching out like the to these other places. And somewhere like it's 140 degrees because they just, it's not sustainable. But it, listen, I, I just, I think it needs to be really looked at. And this is a big topic and this has really come up in our city. And as we're talking about this, this affects your businesses, this affects some of the decision making you're making and in, in, in reinvesting your city and what you're doing here. And, and, and really, it, we need to make some solid decisions really quickly here. Well, and so if we circle back to really where we started here, was it's, it's like, how do we balance the free will of the community people or whether that community is, is part of your family, part of your business, part of the city that you live in, the state or your industry? Like, how do we really balance that with where we feel like our belief system, there are... There are places and people that completely believe something different and they just can't bridge the gap. And it's like, I, I think for myself, I, I can't focus on, I, I, I tend to not want to participate in all the division. And, um, and I think that that's where Charlie, he feels called to really work towards a solution. And I think the reason for that is because he's a connector. His, his, purpose and calling is to connect people to information and to be that guy that brings us together and you have to decide what that means for you in your business and in your community are you going to be the connector or are you just the one who's who's like balancing out maybe somebody who's a connector in your life but the answer is not to do nothing and I think ultimately for us I mean, we would be look at this isn't a community that we'd want our grandkids to be here or our children to be in if it if it continues down this path yeah. because it's not safe. And I, I look at this a little bit deeper. It's just it's it's our town. It's part of our town, and we want it to be part of our town. And we've chosen this to be our home. It's not where we have to. Yeah, we don't have to. We could sell. We could do whatever we want. But I'm not trying to given a way that we're threatening to leave Anchorage because that's not our thing. No. Our thing is that we want to see change. And if we don't see change and we don't see things coming on, and I'm not just speaking for myself, I'm speaking for many others that people are going to look to go elsewhere. And then we don't want to see this fold unless that's what their ultimate goal is. I mean, that's, I, I don't believe that's what our city leaders are looking at. I think they just, they just need to get some more guidance. And if they don't know it, there's lots of information. We're not the only city that's dealing with this stuff. And there's got to be somebody that's come up with something just a little bit better. And just a little bit better. Little. And if we're not working with that, that's where we should be working with those different city leaders and saying, what are you doing? What's working? And what are we doing? It's not working. And, and share that information back and forth. And because that's what KPIs, we do in our KPIs, just like in business, and looking at them every 90 days and understanding, is this moving the needle? Like having some solid metrics that say yes. We absolutely see that this is working and we're going to keep going or that this is not working and we're going to stop doing this and shift gears. And that's where you'll see our th city thrive. Once we can get through this part, we can start seeing it thrive and then more people want to be part of the community. Um, you know, more people are going to want to be part of this lifestyle that we live in here in Alaska. And you know, we have it really fortunate. Just It's just really turned in the last four to six years. It has just progressively gotten a little bit 
worse and worse and worse. And now it's just, <clears throat> it's so blatant in our face now that I think that it was, we've always had a small homeless problem or we've had a major homeless problem. I don't problem. think it was a just, problem, it was a population. Yeah, it, now it just seems like it's more out now there. it's a crime. It's on my, every corner and you're seeing all kinds of crazy stuff there and it's hard not to want to get involved, so. Anyways, thank you guys. Again, look at our podcast. If you have some comments on this, you know, we're, we want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. We don't know everything. We just see an issue and a problem that's gone on this. And this was kind of like something that it was, um, it's just made more in front of us right now. And we just, this is something we felt like we really need to talk yeah, about. Yeah. And if you have a connection with somebody who has seen absolute changes, like, in their community because they put into place these items like by all means like email me reach Tell me. out we want to forward we it on to our our people absolutely too. <laughs> absolutely so thanks again for joining us for the raise up podcast you can check us out at raiseupmindset.com and we'll see you next time thank you thanks again for joining us on the raise up podcast you can find us at raiseupmindset.com our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from instagram facebook our shorts you can download the podcast straight from the website if you're listening on another platform please like subscribe share we're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast. Click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again, bye-bye.